Hello, Liv. Good afternoon. Hi, Mark. Hello. Now, um, you uh, are, are getting in touch today to mm -hmm. tell us all about a very exciting journey that you're about to go on. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to work uh, as a museum guide slash educator uh, at Eketorpori on Öland, uh, so east coast of Sweden, uh, for the summer. Uh, okay. And I plan to be reporting, uh, since it's a um, really fascinating Iron Age slash medieval area. Okay, okay. Now, what, what is there anything that this museum could, could be compared to? Is there anything that you would sort of like to, to give people a sense of what sort of, where it is you're going to be working? I mean, um... Well, the closest UK reference I would be able to pull, I would say, is Jorvik. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, though we Ekatorp isn't a Viking uh, no. center. Uh, okay. Okay. Now it's Iron Age. It's Iron Age. Now this this is where it gets interesting for me because I have always those of you at home always been under the uh, the mistaken impression it seems uh, that the Iron Age and the Viking Age are somewhat interchangeable in Swedish archaeology. Is this true or not? It, it's it's a bit complicated. It's complicated. Uh, <laughs> because uh, Swedish Iron Age includes the Viking area. Of, it okay. does. Okay. Uh, but the Viking era is uh, kind of the gap between Swedish and well Scandinavian uh, Iron Age and Middle Ages. Uh, so the Viking Age goes into both spectras. I see. Uh, so, so in that sense it's sort of... Um... Uh, uh, Viking, no, so it's sort of Iron Age, Viking, Medieval. Yeah. I see. Though you see a lot of Viking practices in Iron Age. It's, it, you do count it as Iron Age, but it's the it's same time thing also. Same time <laughs> thing. Is there anything that you can do? live <laughs> to help me and indeed to help the people at home understand what you're talking about well uh the swedish or scandinavian iron age is usually put into four or five different uh, eras okay uh, so we have pre-roman which is well before we had trade connections with the romans okay uh then we have roman iron age mm -hmm. uh then we have uh the what we call folkvandringstid, which is uh, when all the big uh, uh, emigrations are going on on the continent, and okay. we okay. see a drastic like lack of people up here. Uh, so people are moving uh, south or, or west or what? We don't really know. <laughs> they just <laughs> kind of disappear. <laughs> okay, people are just getting getting the heck out of Sweden. For about a hundred years or so. Okay, uh, okay. And then we have Vendeltid, which is uh, directly uh, before the Viking Age, uh, okay. which is about 500 to 700. Okay, because that, that's actually quite interesting, because cause I suppose here in the UK we have a slightly artificial uh, separation between the Iron Age, I suppose, and what we would call possibly the early medieval period, what mm -hmm. used to be called the Dark Ages. Um in terms of the Roman period, that sort of slots in, in between the two. And that's because, obviously, I guess we have a direct connection yeah. with the Romans. They they actually op occupied the island. But also, as well, I suppose there's a, we, there's, a, there's a strange sort of Victorian hangover in the UK where we try to pretend <laughs> that somehow the Romans weren't an Iron Age culture. They were somehow more enlightened than that, as it were. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm using biased language there. I know I am. <laughs> but that's the language that we've inherited. So it's, it's very interesting, actually, and, and in that sense... I say it can be quite confusing from from as a, from an outsider perspective looking in at Scandinavian archaeology to sort of understand that. But uh, but that, that thank you thank you for illustrating that. Um, so so w while you're away then, what what will you what sort of what sort of stuff will you be doing on this job? Um, I will uh, have be uh, leading guided tours uh, uh -huh. around this fortress. It's a reconstructed uh, fortress uh, that I'm going to be working at. And is um, it on the on the site of a of an original yeah. fortress. Oh right, okay, yes. okay, okay. Uh, cool. They did the excavations in uh, the 1970s, right. and then they started reconstruction in the 1980s up to the late 1990s. I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, 
two walls, uh, like the medieval wall, and yeah. then the later period uh, Iron Age wall. Uh, and then we have half the village being an Iron Age with village, and half of it being the medieval garrison. So, if that's sort of like the second period that you'll be looking at, what 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 is a medieval garrison then in terms of Swedish archaeology? What what does that represent? Is this sort of the equivalent of kind of the beginnings of like the feudal system in the UK, or or, or what? Uh, well, um, early Swedish history is mostly like civil war. Uh, <laughs> Civil uh, War or fighting the Danes, as far as I can tell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and those are two distinctly different things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, because this uh, this fortress was active uh, during the establishment of the Swedish uh, monarchy. Right. Uh, when Sweden becomes more of a whole. Uh, okay. When Sweden becomes Sweden, Swedenish, like a thesis uh, in the making, because it's jumbled up. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And is that, is that just just to sort of to, again just to sort of clarify a little bit there? Is that mm -hmm. sort of coming out of uh, I suppose the Viking kingdoms? Yes. Were. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, so we have two big families, one on the west coast and one on the east coast, right. that are struggling for control over the whole area. Right. Uh, and when with the area, I mean Sweden. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, the family on the east coast seems to be the ones that have had control of this fortress mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of other fortresses on Öland, which is an island on the east coast, okay. uh, protecting them from Danish interests right. because Denmark became a unified nation a lot earlier than Sweden. So they didn't only have a civil war trying to make that kingdom, they also mm -hmm. had to protect themselves from the Danes. And also at this point, uh, presumably Norway would have been fairly unified as well. Um, yes, yes. So if things they would like have been. so sort of following people like Harold Fine, uh, you end up with a, a more of a Norwegian. So in that sense, Swedes were late to the party of nationhood. Yes, yes, we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but uh, but unless uh, okay, that's that's uh, so so in that sense, then you, what you're going to be doing then is also almost sort of. Uh, uh, frog leaping, uh, leapfrogging the uh, the Viking Age, as it were, which is quite yeah. interesting. Uh, because uh, this this fortress in particular uh, was uh, abandoned during the Viking era. Right. Uh, okay. We do have Viking finds uh, on the site and uh, on Öland, mm -hmm. but uh, it seems that they didn't use the fortress in the same permanent way that they have done before and after. No, 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 okay. Interesting. So, so it wasn't really, uh, presumably, if it, even though it came to, to represent, it seems, interests that the Danes had to be protected from, as it were, um, mm -hmm. at that, during the Viking Age, it wasn't necessarily like a key trading post or anything like that. It was just exactly. a, a place. Okay, uh, okay. Interesting. Um, so, uh, so we've heard about the site. We've, we've heard a little bit about what you're going to be doing. Um, what are you going to be doing that the that, 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 that the fine folk watching this video should be should be looking out for? Uh, I will be blogging mostly uh -huh. Uh -huh. because I fear I would have a fairly dodgy internet connection. Okay. Uh, uh, I will also try and report in uh, through uh, Skype to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Along the way, uh, but mostly I will be blogging about. Uh, well, what my experience is and, um, and also the surrounding sites and the site I'm going to be at uh, because Erland is uh, covered with archaeological sites. Okay, cool. So so we'll put a link, obviously, to, to Liv's blog in the video and information below. Really, frankly, your link has been floating around associated with what you do for a while now on Archaeos. <laughs> but we'll, we'll remind folk below. Um, just as a little little uh, query, will you be able to sort of capture any footage that we can sort of put into the Skype calls, or I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I will be capturing video footage with the the camera uh, that uh, Patreon uh, thankfully oh, provided course, me yes. with. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I will also be capturing still photos with my with my phone. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be hopefully hearing a bit uh, through video, but also may, also via the blog. Just about mm -hmm. what what you're seeing. I mean, we we be reflect reflecting much upon, as it were, the practice, as it you know, of, of doing what you're doing, or or not. I think I will. I think I I won't be able not to because no. I will be living it because we're living on site. Uh, oh, oh, cool. Okay, okay, that's cool. So, uh, so 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 so, how far does that go? I mean, it's like 
Do, do you have modern toilets? We have a modern <laughs> house outside of the footprints okay. where we're okay. living. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll be at most like a hundred meters away from my workplace when I'm there. Oh, that's very cool. Very uh, cool. And we'll be living together, all the ones who work there during the summer. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how this goes and obviously reading about it and, mm -hmm. and chatting with you. Um, I think, uh, I suppose the, uh, this is interesting because when you were first applying for this role, I know that you sort of mentioned, um, to me at least, uh, you sort of referenced my experience when I was working at Jorvik. And what's interesting mm -hmm. there is that, I mean, okay, yes, I was living in and working in a city, but in many ways, for about two or three years, I was, it was a very particular situation where I was sort of essentially being encouraged to, to, to sort of inhabit a, a period of time and mm -hmm. live, as it were, within about, in that case, about 200 metres of the site as well. So yeah. it's, it sort of becomes your world in a very particular way. And so this, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I mean, given that, I mean, how, how, how far are you away from the nearest town, as it were? This, this uh, well, I'll, I'll be, I will bo we'd be borrowing my mother's car because okay. <laughs> we'll be about uh, 30 k's away from the nearest biggest uh, town okay. in, on Erland. Yeah. And I'll be about uh, 60k away from uh, from Kalmar. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's 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 in the bush. <laughs> in the bush, excellent. Well, and again, in that sense, so, so it sounds like this could be a shorter but more intense experience. You know, mm -hmm. for for me at the very least, I could go to the pub at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Whereas uh, you guys will be living on the. It's going to be fascinating. Um, yes. So, are you excited about it? I am a uh, big panicky at the moment since yeah. it's three dates to departure, uh, and I haven't packed yet. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, in that case, then I suppose we should let you pack. But um, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure you're going to have a great time. Um, I think so too. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Excellent, and uh, I look forward to seeing what comes comes out of this. Um, as I say, guys. Uh, We'll put links, relevant links below, and I suppose we'll make a, a little sort of little enclave of videos, perhaps a little section somewhere on the, on the YouTube mm -hmm. channel where you can watch these as they, as they come along. But uh, but yeah, this this will be really funky. And also, actually, yeah. um, I don't know, is there any any chance of sort of because uh, uh, I know that you're going to have like a um, costumes and this kind of thing. Yes. Yes, I, I will have one medieval outfit and one Iron Age outfit. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> uh, will you get a chance to, to, to sort of like to do crafts and things as well? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah? Uh, so my, my needle binding will be up to scratch uh, uh -huh, when the uh -huh. summer's over. Okay, we will not... also be doing uh, some weaving and bread making and stuff like that uh, that the uh, tourist that's come to us, us gets to test. Wonderful. So, so, uh, so, to people actually get to uh, the visitors actually get to sort of you know, taste the bread that you make. Mm -hmm. that, that's quite a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great with bread. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to lay the pressure on. Um, excellent. Cool. Well, well, yeah. This, this, this sounds like it's going to be really interesting. Um, do follow this stuff on the blog. Uh, like I say, there'll be videos to come, and uh, well, like I say, I'll let you pack. But, um, but yeah, take care and keep in touch. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.